Oh my god, this footstool is a game changer. It's a game changer. We put a footstool on the table. so much better right now. We put a footstool on the table. I feel more stable, more comfortable. Welcome to episode <sighs> three. Oh, we're filming? Of Hang with the Harrisons. Uh, there's a footstool involved now. My wife is scrolling. That's her I'm life. Always scrolling. She stays on her phone all the time. <laughs> According hey, to our ten-year-old daughter, I do. Pays no attention to me <clears throat> or our podcast. What are you doing? I'm picking at you. You got fuzz. We really need to. We need to do one of those. You got my hair in your beard. <laughs> it's okay. This is how we start. We hope you've had an excellent week. Uh, thank you for joining us and coming back and hanging out. Uh, you must like us because you're back again. And if, you're, if this is your first time checking out the podcast, my name is the Professor Nick Harrison at Mr. Professor 318 on all social media platforms. This is my lovely wife, Lisa oh, Carol Harrison. Yes. Uh, I still don't know what her ads are, but you can catch her on Hanging with the Harrisons oh. on Instagram, TikTok, <laughs> and you on Facebook. Read them to you? No, don't. Um, so you don't we, really care. Yeah, I don't. So we have a podcast. Um, <laughs> Tell me how you really feel, babe. I did. We have a podcast uh, where we talk about marriage and relationships and uh, not paying attention to our social media. And you know, just I don't pay attention to my own social media. You don't pay attention to mine. <laughs> Last time I logged into my Instagram, I had like 27 messages from my friends and family sending me hilarious stuff, but I had been signed into his the whole time. Just neglecting her. You just heard how she neglects her friends and family. You just heard that, right? We're digging it's not deep. Intentional. We're digging deep. You gotta point that stuff out, man. Because it's funny. It's to who? Me. You. That's all that matters, guys. As long as Nick's laughing. That's Nick. He points a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Shout out to Rut. My boy Rutledge Woods. Shout out to him, man. He's awesome. It's Nick. He points a lot. There's so many pictures. So if you watch the show Hot Wheels Ultimate Challenge, there's so so many pictures. Of me pointing at things and pointing at people. But what's funny is that wasn't all like me just pointing at stuff to be pointing at stuff. There were times where the social media guy who set it off on the side is like, hey, can you point at that while we take this picture real quick? So you're like looking like you're pointing at something. Sure. Just pointing at things. It's like (laughs) I was directed to point at things at times. You know. But it's. But you do. I do point. I'm a 43-year-old black man. 50% of my life is pointing at things and people. So that's where we are. Uh, (laughs) We are a very interesting pair. We are. (laughs) One of the things that... That's a word for it. We were talking to, like she was talking to a friend of ours the other day, or she sent her something where, you know, it's... A lot of like marriage and relationships is uh, you know finding somebody just as weird as Hold you on. are. Relationships is. That's not what I said. That's what he said. That is not what I said. Relationships is. The word is was right after that. Relationships is. What's a relationship is or relationships are? Hey. Just a little question and answer. I just want them to get to know you. What subject did you teach when you English. were... But, uh, hold on. What was that? I don't think they heard you. English. But, check it. Relationships is... Is proper grammar. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, it is. It very much is. Relationships is... <laughs> Oh, no. One of the great things about relationships is. One is. Okay. I'm aware that is. Because about relationships and that is what? 
An ad, advert, advert clause? Because we're paying attention to the beginning, to yes. the subject and not one the is. word relationship. Yes. One thing about relationships is we're talking about the one thing, mm-hmm. not relationships. So relationships is, in that context, is proper grammar. So for the record, you know what we've done? We have opened up another window of, of an avenue of reach that when parents are trying to teach their children English, they can YouTube our podcast. See, <laughs> last week, I threatened to quit. <laughs> Literally walked off set, was gone. Done. It's all part of my strategic plan. This week, <laughs> that foot is out the door. It's out the door. Door. Out of the door. That door Does that make you so- feel better? Out of the door. Let me pronounce it correctly so that my wife doesn't derail the podcast <laughs> for like five minutes to correct my freaking grammar. <laughs> Lisa, what is going on Lisa right now? I'm correcting your math because that oh, would be something. Don't do that. You what corrected did, my math? What did I do the other day? We were doing, it was doing, I was like, oh my God, that song's like 15 years old. And you were like, add 10, babe. <laughs> the math ain't math. The math ain't math. Math ain't math. <sighs> but. A friend of mine <laughs> sent her a, a, a post about how we try to find somebody who's as weird as we are so that we can be weird together. And that it goes into what we were talking, what we we're going to talk about today, which is our first date. Um, we touched on how we met uh-huh. on the first uh, episode of the pod, but we wanted to dive deeper into. We promised y'all. You know, our actual first date. And, you know, uh, how she landed this tasty slice. Um, So that's what we're going to (laughs) do. There it is. Did I so I'm going for so I'm, so I'm going for the snort all podcast long all episode long. I'm going for the snort. <laughs> hey, <laughs> and two. It. We got two. So yeah, it's <laughs> so Cacharillo right here. This what? guy, the eight by ten glossy. Hey, all right. That's right. Hey guys, what up? So, how did this happen? (sighs) Took some planning, say that. Took a lot of work to make this, to to set the wheels into motion on us going out on a date together. Um, If we had met when we were, like, in high school or junior high, uh, first of all, it would have been frowned upon because I'm four years older than her. So it would have been like, what, I was a senior and you would have been? Eighth grade, probably. Yeah, no. That only works in 80s rock songs. She's only 17. Dirty Dancing. Dirty Dancing. (laughs) Okay. Tangent. Let's get to it. Let's talk about it. Johnny Castle, how dare he? Right? Because... Baby was like 12. She was <laughs> She was 16, ladies and gentlemen. But he was so you definitely. Say. So you no, say. No, I've looked this up because we went on the tangent at one time and I didn't have a rebuttal. So She's I like Googled. And, and according to our pastor today, Google is always right. I hope he's watching that. That's not the, that's not, he's, he is not going to watch our podcast. That, he, that makes me sad. We make a lot of references. I say in. that. I say that. But I feel like he is. Just so we can pick on Lisa a little bit. That's true. He loves to pick on her. Loves it. He likes me I love more. to pick on him, too. 
So it's just she brought him some. We brought him some gifts the other day. I did, and he was he was so happy. I got him a mug that said, "What did the mug say?" It said same thing. That kind of the signs of it. it said, "Watch out, this may end up in my sermon or something." And he brought. I got him a sign. Said kind of the same thing. It says, Here's "Warning." Here's your sign. Here's your sign. Um, said the warning. Whatever you say may or may not be used in a sermon or whatever. And he pulled it up on the platform last week, and he was like, "This is the funniest part about this is that it's coming from her." And I was like, "I know." I know. It's good stuff. <laughs> That's why I got it. It's good stuff. So, <laughs> but yeah, Where we... we? Uh, tangent. Tangent. Dirty Dancing. Dirty Dancing. How dare you uh, try to put that on our screens and deceive the great Leonard Briscoe. Anyways, I Googled it. Baby was set, was 16. Johnny was so like, had said. to have been like 20, 21. In the actual still life. no, it's still it. It was I. It didn't say when I googled it. I felt better about the fact uh-huh. that I watched that when I was three. And he was teaching her dirty dancing. She's sixteen. So, mm. but this is also kind of goes into regular this, Jerry Lee Lewis situation. You know, last episode he called me a straight up millennial, but the reason I say I'm in this like exennial. She's not though. Range. I am though because she's, she's in the I range, watched Dirty she's Dancing at yet. the age of three. She, I remember running. We all watched Dirty Dancing at the age of three. What are you no, about? we all didn't. My daughter will not. She did not. She bet not. And this is not, Mom. I know version. that you're listening, Mom. I know you're listening. This is not a pointing out that you're a horrible parent because you're not. Who said that? Who she's even alluded to it? She's gonna hear that. It's. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that the entire parental generation that what raised is going us, on here? there were a lot. What like, and this? that's one of the things that we do believe that we are going to do some content or bring into a podcast at some point. Our song lyrics. We did one. The if you go back and watch the "I Want to Sex You Up" video. We should not have known that song. Unplug the phone so nobody knows. Like, it's yeah. creepy. The whole thing is creepy. Really? Anyways, he has some My Sharona. I, that's the only part I know is my Sharona. Always give it up for the touch of the younger kind. That's weird. Y'all. Moving on. Um. <laughs> so, anyway. First date. First date. That's what we want to talk about today. Oh, yeah. You were four years older than me. Four years older than her. Mm -hmm. Uh, So. We only grew up five minutes apart. Like, it's. We grew up five minutes apart. She's from Ruston, Louisiana. from Granville, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Five minutes apart. Um, We passed each other like ships in the night for years. Mm -hmm. and had no idea each other existed. Until we met on the sidelines of a football game. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> My friends, when they found out I was down here and that we were, uh, I think man, we were married by then. Mm-hmm. Um, they like they say, you know, I. They told me that they remember her from Blockbuster. She used to work at Blockbuster in Ruston, mm-hmm. and um, it's national video first. We transitioned to, to Blockbuster. blockbuster. And they called her Blockbuster job. Lisa. Blockbuster Lisa. I don't know if you'll ever experience something as harrowing and heart pounding as your high school buddies <laughs> recounting how they used to salivate over your wife. <laughs> I don't know if you will ever experience moments in your life where your buddies, yeah, Blockbuster Lisa. Giggity, giggity, giggity. (laughs) Uh, 
did all, it make you feel, babe? I almost asked for an annulment like at that moment because what? it's like I don't know if I can live with that. We had been married longer life. than ninety days. We don't have children together though. So we can get an old basically anytime. I don't think that's right. Yeah, I think it is. I can know it. Tune right in now. next week where I will have the answer to that question. A correction and retraction segment sounds like <laughs> par for the course with this podcast. And I'm all for I it. I will always be correcting the <clears throat> wrong information he's given you. Yeah, like relationships is. <laughs> he got that one right, guys. See, I am not ashamed to admit one it. One of many. I'm one not ashamed to admit it. So we... Hey, I've, I need to pause just really quick. Can you... I'm just having this like weird gut feeling that that's not recording. I'm leaving this in, by the way. Yeah, still totally recording. We're good. Yeah. I, I, hey, I am I'm like... This in. I'm, I'm traumatized this in. from last week. Or two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah, that's what this is. Two weeks ago. Yeah. That's when we did this. It was two weeks after the first episode. It's a real thing. Yeah. So. (laughs) Yes. We met each other on the sidelines of uh, Union High Football. Mm -hmm. Um. And we again we touched on this in the first episode, and um, we were both married. Uh, could not date each other. There was really nothing there. Like mm-hmm. we, had, you know, that wasn't. I mean, I. I mean, friendship. Like we're yeah, a cool guy. But not like a. <coughs> it wasn't an option. Nah, I gotta get it get with yeah. her or anything like that. It wasn't an option. Yeah, it wasn't really a thing. So, years down the line, I'm in New Orleans. She's living in Hammond. Mm-hmm. Uh, she see like it was a very crazy time, and I was talking to this uh, a week ago with my buddy Jake. Uh, pizza beer party, Jake Holland. If you for devotees, please stop doing that. And <laughs> just so distracted, we cut fuzz everywhere. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Stop doing that. Isn't that what monkeys do? Oh, gosh. So. (laughs) Go ahead. (laughs) She's picking up my beard for those listening. It was just so, one big, it was one like really long black hair that was yeah. just sticking out. So. <laughs> if we weren't on the podcast, I'd make a joke about that, but we're not going to do that. We're not going to go that way. Um, we. Pause. What's the joke? No, I'm not doing that. I'll tell you, you after. Edit it out. I'll tell you after. I'll tell you after. I don't want to edit it out. Now everyone wants going. to know. Well, the world wants to know. The world will never know much like how many licks it takes to, to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Pop. Three. Um, so, that was a very, my life changed <laughs> that week because I interviewed with WWE on the bump mm-hmm. and then the next day, we're on a date uh, in the middle of New Orleans. Mm-hmm. That week, she had seen me in a social media post by the mayor of Monroe, Louisiana, who was there with his wife, who's also an educator. And she sees and she's like, what are you guys doing in my neck of the woods? And I didn't realize she was living down here, so I hit her up mm-hmm. and say, you know, do you want to go out and have dinner? She said, I'm retired from dating. And I mm-hmm. said, we're just going as friends. And then she he tried to, to flirt that. with me a little bit over over the message, and my response to him was like, "So I'm reading this book by Michael Todd called Relationship Goals, um, and so I'm not going to flirt with you." Like, <laughs> I was like adamant, "I'm she not dating right now. Hardcore. This is like I'm I am done." Yeah. And I had, um, 
you know, it, I what year, that was 2021. So mm. beginning of 20. Hold on, let me think about this. 17, 18. Beginning of 2019, I had was in a probably the longest relationship I was in after mm. after my separation and divorce. Um, but long. And then I loved his family. They loved me, but we were we were not truly compatible. Mm-hmm. Um, and then lots of like just kind of dating excursions, nothing really serious. Um, and then I just recognized like I, I mean, to be completely blunt and honest, I just wasn't I wasn't living by the standards that I had put forth for myself for my life, and so. Um, I recognized that I had a lot of healing to do and a lot of like self work I needed to to do during that time and putting um, a man into the mix that was just not not what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. So I was definitely I was very very much so just like kind of shut off and yeah. um, pastor had like literally the year before pastor said that he has this rule that not post separation but two years post actual divorce like the date of the divorce Mm -hmm. is when he when he would ever it's kind of his rule to even like set people up after that like if he has somebody that that they might do well with and so um for me divorce wasn't until 2019 so um that would have been 2021. And so I was just kind of took that to heart because he didn't tell me that until 2020. And so I kind of took that to heart and was like, there's no reason for me to do this. Yeah. I need to really focus on myself. And I did a, a massive, very long and convoluted and drastic healing journey mm-hmm. I went on. Um. Which is wonderful. I'm yeah. so, I mean, we're all still on it, honestly. I'm definitely still on it. So many things I need to heal. Yes. Oh, um, me too. Yeah. And we're all, you know, just one walking bag of trauma. <laughs> true. It's very true. <laughs> to, so. put, to put it bluntly. Um, so, yeah, I said I wasn't dating. and But we went as... As friends. As friends. So, I ended up having... A, the hotel room I was in at the time was paid for by the district because I was there mm-hmm. on their behalf. So, I ended up getting my own hotel room, checking out of that one and going to that hotel, which you is across the street. stayed in the city I did. late for me. To, 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 I stayed in the city a day late for her. And it... <clears throat> it was right across the street from this place called Lucy's Surf Bar uh, in New Orleans, which I absolutely love. Lucy's is great. The Juicy Lucy is to die for. I uh, highly recommend it. Um, so I'm at the hotel. She is coming from work, I guess. Um, I worked that morning, and then Emma had a writing lesson in Folsom, and Emma's I had to daughter. get... Elijah settled. Elijah's get son. Emma from writing lesson to my best friend Dee's house because she was keeping her for the night, and then get to the city. And we had a five thirty reservation, I believe. I think so, yeah. And her writing lesson was like at two thirty. And Folsom is over an hour from Baton Rouge, and Baton Rouge is an hour to the city. I was cutting it close, guys. Cutting it close. So she gets to the room, or she gets to the city and comes to the hotel. She asks if she can change clothes in my hotel room. Now, any guy with a different mindset would have read that differently. Say, hey, can I change clothes in your hotel room? (laughs) I was like, sure. And uh, she got into the room. Well, he, uh, first, I was like, hey, if I stop and change and get ready for this date, I'm going to be late and we're going to miss our reservation. And so I need to get ready in your hotel room. And his immediate response was, that's fine. I'll wait in the lobby. 
And I was like, I'm really sorry. I'm Hot Mess Express over here. And I think I sent a picture yeah. of me in like, again, yoga pants and tank top. And my mm-hmm. hair was literally messy bun on top. I had no makeup on, nothing. Mm-hmm. I haven't, I hadn't seen him. I think I had seen you. Was probably. Um, 2015? Yeah. So it had been now, five will, or six years. I will say that when she sent that picture, I almost canceled the date. But I went you through it. You did not. I did. Lies. I'm kidding. Uh, I've told her for as long as I could tell her yeah. that it doesn't matter. She looks, She's beautiful to me regardless. doesn't matter. And I mean that. And <clears throat> so she sent me that picture and sit, came to the hotel. And she came into the room and we exchanged pleasantries, uh, nothing physical. And then I say, you know, I'm going to go down to the lobby. And, you know, her immediate response was, you know, you don't have to do that. You can just sit here and I'll just change in the bathroom. I was like, nope, I'm leaving the room. I'm going down to the lobby. You let me know when you're ready. And that's what happened. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, because I didn't want there to be any, you know, didn't want anything to be misconstrued as Mm -hmm. to what I expected or what I was thinking was going to happen because I was truly, this was a friend thing. Like, Mm -hmm. we're just going out to hang out and I'm headed back home tomorrow. Um, we had reservations at this place in New Orleans called Shia, mm. which we actually went to yesterday <clears throat> and picked, oh, well, excuse me, a week ago, and picked up a fried chicken hummus, uh. Uh, which is her favorite thing uh, that they do. And I remember being in there and looking over the counter and looking because I could see the table that we had our first date at when we started our first date at. Aww. That was right, like right in front of me, and I smiled. I looked at it and smiled, and, and you know, for a little while, and just really started thinking about that first date that you know us going to Shia. Mm-hmm. Shia is an Israeli joint in New Orleans. On magazine. Very very good. <laughs> so good. They make their own pita. Uh, it's on wood fired wood oven, fired oven. Oh, right there so in good. the restaurant where you can see it while they're making so the pita. Good. Just continuously making pita all day. Mm-hmm. It's just really good. So we get to the table. She or we order a fried chicken hummus. First off, he sits on the same side as me. Right. Which I don't necessarily mind, but like if you're gonna sit in the side, like I'm gonna turn to the side and like put my leg up on the chair on the booth and like we're gonna talk face to face right Uh so it's actually better if he's across from me however this is how he started the date and we don't like i don't think we've had a date since then like even there was (laughs) summer we went to a place called osteria lupo i get another new it's a newer restaurant on magazine as well and italian joint so good. Really, really good. So good. Really good. Um, and the way that our table was, it didn't make sense for us to be beside each other. Right. There wasn't enough room. And so I turned the table <sighs> and he sat beside me. It's very weird to sit across from her. We tried for the first part of that day. Uh huh. And it just was like, this is weird, this right? This is weird. It's weird. So we turned, and we asked the waitress if it was okay if we turned the table. She was like, sure. So we turned the table so we could sit next to each other. That's what we do. What we do. Um, so we sat next to each other. We had the brisket, which was really oh good and fatty, gosh. and the uh, fried chicken hummus. And, and he we, knew he was in love with me when I ordered my Old Fashioned. Well, I know how to order a drink. I do. She does. I, do. uh, I don't think I had, like, water or something. I can't remember. Did I have a drink? I don't remember. I don't know. Uh, the, yeah, I think you had like Jameson and Jim Jarrell or something like something that. Something like that. A uh, very classy man drink, which, yeah, I think so. I think so. So we left there and went to Urban South. Yes, that's where we went next. Left there, went to Urban South uh, for the next part of the day. This date was actually very, you know. It was a long date. It was a long date. It, was, uh, it didn't feel long. No, it not at, at all. all. It's, it was a long Well, and the, let's go back to dinner, though, because so I am. I'm sorry. I couldn't, I'm going to stop picking at. No, she's not. I'm not. I'm not going to. So um, 
all of these. So I, so he was on the bump on Wednesday. Okay, uh-huh. so all of his friends, the people that are in his circle, know what that means. I didn't know uh-huh. because I had like zero. I had probably about six months prior had gone down like the rabbit hole of Nick Harrison's TikTok. Um, and it was funny. I didn't get a lot of it because a lot of it was wrestling content. And I was like, okay, whatever. And so before the date, like when he was on the bump, I watched the replay of it, right? And it was just like the best part of that entire um, episode was watching the three hosts rewatch one of the entrances that they replayed. And just they were like, oh, my God, he got that. He got that. And just they're like absolute joy and excitement to see what he did i was like okay he obviously knows what he's doing right i mean he's this is a big deal and then to see all of his friends post how proud they were of him and what an incredible man he is and this journey and i was like okay nick's got it going on that's cool like obviously this is this is a big deal right so one of the first things i was like okay explain this whole bump thing to me because i have no idea what's going on and at some point, right. I don't know, like later you were like, that was probably the most refreshing because I think at that time in his dating career, there were a lot of, of women who were not necessarily interested in him, but saw kind of, I guess, the fame that was coming or what they thought was coming, right? And they weren't, they weren't in it, in it for him. And, like, for, for who he is, it was, like, what came along with it. And so that, I mean, am I, am I right? You want to? In part. <coughs> in part. <coughs> well, explain why there that were, was so refreshing, <coughs> then. It was, refre- it was refreshing because. You need some water? No. It was refreshing because um, mm-hmm. that she was, she had no idea of what kind of content I you did or what I was doing. Like, she actually was interested in what I was doing with the, the social media stuff and wanted to know because she had no idea. Like, at that point, it was just every time I turned around, oh, my God, oh, it's so great. Oh, you're good. It's like, she's like, eh, so what is this? Yeah. What are these things? And it wasn't that I didn't understand social media. I was, like, you know, living under a rock. It was just that I... He wasn't a big deal to me. He was Nick who covered. Still not. It's true. Care. I don't watch half his videos. She don't care. I watch the ones that he like runs into the room and like, look at this. It's the only way I can get her to watch him. It's. It's not that bad. <laughs> but I like that though. I don't need my wife to think <laughs> I'm a big deal. To her, I'm Nick. Yeah. And that's totally fine with me. Mm-hmm. Uh. I get to see, like, that's the thing. Y'all see these funny videos. I literally live this life. Yeah. Like, there's not a day that we're, like, he constantly, we're constantly laughing mm-hmm. at each other. All the time. I mean, all the time. So, the time. like, this is, I don't need to see a video to yeah. laugh at, to know that my husband's funny. Um, so, we left there. Yeah. and I, So, we talked about that and a bunch of other stuff. And then we Ubered from there to Urban South. Mm-hmm. And sat at Urban South for a while, and we continued talking and getting to know each other, and just really because it was a lot of talking going on. Like we were talking the whole time, and then we left there, and she was like, "You know, I want to go to Emeralds." Mm-hmm. We Uber to Emeralds. Emeralds is closed. Yeah, they hadn't opened since the pandemic. I I love to drink coffee and eat dessert at Emeralds, which we eventually ended up doing like a year later. Yes, but at the same time. Because it was, they were actually open the next um, mm-hmm. teacher leader summit. Yeah, so we actually had a chance to do it that mm-hmm. uh, that time. But before then, like that, but the first day, Emeralds was closed. Mm-hmm. We had gotten to the neighborhood where the hotel is, and uh, we start walking towards the hotel. And there's a place called New Orleans Social House that's on mm-hmm. the way. So we stopped at New Orleans Social House, and this is when. And I'm and I'm going to tell the truth. All right. This is this. I joke Wait about this it. all the time. 
Let's see what comes out of his mouth. I, I joke about this all the time. This, this, I'm going to tell the truth. So we get <clears throat> uh, to the front of New Orleans Social House. I don't even know if I want to tell this part because now it's going to be on tape. And I can't joke and lie about it anymore. Uh, we get to uh, New Orleans Social House and my wife um, accosts me. <laughs> I knew it wasn't going to be the truth. I knew it. You're just not capable. <laughs> You're not capable of telling okay. the truth about what happened. Okay, seriously. To the point where I don't know that I know the actual truth anymore. I'm going to tell the actual truth. We okay. get to the front of New Orleans Social House, and I kiss her. <clears throat> and um, How did it happen, though? I We stopped. Uh, we looked at each other, and she said, what? And I kissed her. And I thought we were just, like, looking in the door to see if we wanted to go in. We At first, and I, like, stopped her and pulled her back towards me. And I kissed her. Uh, because it's just been such a wonderful day, and I was really just, it, the feeling came over me. So I kissed her, and then she we went inside New Orleans Social House, and she proceeded to tell two dudes <laughs> how much of how pansy how many how much of a pansy they both were because they were ordering Sazerac. They didn't want a Sazerac. They didn't even know what it was. Nobody, I mean, this was uh, belittling. The likes of which you may have never seen before in your life in public. Uh, and it was great. And she also <laughs> encountered uh, what she thought was the best bartender that she had ever seen. The uh, best old-fashioned I have ever had in my we, life. And it has no never been recreated. Never and know. the next time we went back there, which was only a few months later, dude, he, was gone. dude was gone. Dude didn't work there anymore. So it was crazy. But we stopped there and... Uh, you know, hung we're gonna out for find him again one day, and we left there and went to Lucy's, yeah, and had burgers. And uh, we had burgers, took, I think so. Did we? We, we ate, ate something, something. That we was ate something. Cute. yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then we like took pictures and sent them to my buddy Fox because he knows us both, and uh, basically let him know because we were like canoodling sitting there together and then she Those are my favorite pictures yes they're very sweet um well, then we walked <clears throat> back to the hotel mm -hmm. which was across the street and i uh, kissed her good night mm -hmm. and went back up to my room yeah and she let me know when she got home safely and that was the end of the date that was the end of the date uh, our second date was the next day. Next morning. We had brunch at this place here in Hammond. Yeah. Um, so. He was meeting me. So I had a painting that I did for a friend of mine um, named Sarah who lived in Monroe. Or lives in Monroe. And um, done it for her mom. Mm -hmm. And I needed to get it to her. And I wasn't going to be going home for a while. Um, and she needed it for, it was for Mother's Day. Yeah. Is that right? I no. Think. No, because it was in May, so. Yeah, there's something, maybe they were, I don't know. Well, it might have been Mother's Day. But Mother's Day is beginning of May. Father's Day is the beginning of June, or middle of June. I don't know, anyway, she needed it. And I wasn't going to be able to get it to her. Maybe it was her mom's birthday. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. And so, Nick had to come through Hammond anyway, on his way home and so I had the painting and we met for brunch at and we had crepes and coffee yes and just a wonderful time and she yeah. worked from there I did that's right uh, I had like conference calls yeah, and stuff and so, you just sat there yeah and then we uh say goodbye again and then I went back home and uh, took the painting to her friend, and then her friend gave me jellies. Jelly, that's right. We were exchanging. To, to give back to Lisa, and she was like, are you going to see her again? I said, well, yeah. So that just gave me a reason to go back to heaven. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that's how the relationship began, and now here mm -hmm. we are. And he had already, like, kind of planned 
to come back in July. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just kind of planned opportunities to meet up. Yeah. And it's We've just, talked every day since. Has been a day that's gone by where we didn't talk to each other in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. So it's humble beginnings. And, you know, now we love each other more than ever. It's true. And... I couldn't imagine doing this life with anybody else. Aww. I'm very, very thankful. You're so sweet. You're such a good liar to the camera. <laughs> Acting! No, I'm kidding. I do love her. I know. <laughs> I love him, too. We can't fool them anyway. No, Even if we tried. The smiles on our face kind of yeah. give it away. So, thank you for joining uh, episode three. Are we done? Yeah, we're done. Why do you do that? Well, I just don't know how long we've been. We need to do a timer. We've been on it for like an hour and an hour. No way. Close to it. Watch when we check the time. Let's believe. The, the last, when we did the one last week, you were like, are we done? And we had gone on for like 45 minutes. And she didn't even realize it. Just never want to stop spending time with you. I know, babe. We're going to, you know, we are going to ride in the car together on the way home. The so way it's home. not like. Yeah, we're going to see each other again mm -hmm. after this. I guarantee it. If nobody told you today. That was two eyes. If nobody told you today, you are loved, you're appreciated, you're important, you're more than enough, exactly as you are, and always room to be great. <laughs> Make sure to check out the social channels yes. at Miss Professor 318, hanging with the Harrisons mm -hmm. on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Search it, look it up, go yep. take, get it. See you guys next week for another episode of Hanging with the Harrisons. Hey, Bye. Hold on. Pause. You didn't even get like. Give me a chance, man. Y'all can start sending if y'all if there are things that y'all have questions about or things that we didn't answer or was confusing or y'all have topics that y'all would love for us to discuss. Y'all start sending them our way and we'll just start addressing them. Yeah, we'll do that. Anything? I think that's it. Bye bye now. Bye bye.